protein, which we would hope would uh, act to ameliorate the symptoms of the disease, and perhaps stop the progression of the disease. Um, so let me begin by just outlining what the gene mutation is in Friedrich's and other related uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So, in the case of Friedrich's ataxia, it's a GAA triplet repeat that occurs in what is known as an intron of a gene. That's a, a region of a gene that actually doesn't code for the protein, but interrupts the protein coding region of the gene. During the processing of the RNA transcript of this gene, that is the copy of the gene into what is known as messenger RNA, that region is spliced out, removed, thrown away. And so the GAA repeats really don't interfere with the coding potential of the frataxin gene. What the GAA repeats do is they suppress the activity of the frataxin gene. They turn it, they turn it down. So let's say you have uh, a hot cold tap on your, on your sink and uh, hot is on, cold is, is off. Well, the GAA repeats are like a rheostat. They turn the activity of the gene down. Now the question is, how do they do that? And that's going to be the subject of the first part of my talk. And then how we can overcome that with small molecules that might be therapeutics is what I'll address. Now, many of the spinocerebellar ataxias, on the other hand, are CAG repeats. And those are in the coding regions of genes. The triplet CAG encodes an amino acid called glutamine. And so when you have long stretches of glutamine, you have these polyglutamine expansions. And that causes the proteins that are encoded by these genes to misfold. So the spine, some of the spinocerebellar ataxias are protein misfolding diseases. And related diseases, Huntington's. And at the very end of my talk, I'll talk about a potential therapeutic for Huntington's, which might also apply to the polyglutamine type spinocerebellar ataxias. Okay, so let's go back to Friedrichs. As I said, the GAA repeats are in this interrupting region called an intron not changing the protein coding region of the gene. Normal individuals have fewer than 40 or so GAA repeats. This is a slide stolen from Massimo. It's Massimo and his colleagues, including Michelle, who identified these GAA repeats in the Frataxin gene. Now, individuals with Friedrichs have greater than 70, usually less than 1,000 GAA repeats. And those repeats, those long repeats, called, cause gene silence. Okay. So let me just describe how we in the laboratory determine the number of repeats, and then we'll address what those repeats do. So we use a technique called the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR for short, to determine the number of GAA repeats in the chromosomal DNA of an individual suspected to have Friedrichs. So we use an enzyme called DNA polymerase, a certain type of DNA polymerase, that can rapidly copy DNA. And we use short pieces of DNA that act as what we call primers. Now those short pieces of DNA latch on to their cognate regions in chromosomal DNA. That is, they hybridize to chromosomal DNA. They form um, base pairs, hydrogen bonding base pairs to the DNA. And then this enzyme copies the region intervening where these two primers sit. Because it's a chain reaction, you get exponential copying of the, the DNA that corresponds to the region of interest specified by the sequence of the short pieces. And what we're doing is copying the region of the intron of the Frataxin gene. We then take that DNA that's been copied. Now we've got lots and lots of copies. And we run it on what is known as a agarose gel. So agarose is something 
derived from seaweed. It's like gelatin. And we know that DNA will migrate in such a gel. Long pieces of DNA migrate slower than shorter pieces of DNA. And we can use DNA's fragments of known length to define the length of the polymerase chain reaction product from the frataxin gene. So a healthy person is going to have very few repeats. And in this particular instance, we estimate that this individual had about six GAA repeats in their frataxin gene based on the size of that fragment, which we estimate from these pieces of DNA of known one. An individual with three groups has a fragment from the same piece of the chromosome that migrates slower, and from its rate of migration relative to the known pieces, we can calculate that this individual has two copies of the Frataxin gene, each with about 600 repeats, which would be sufficient to silence the Frataxin gene. Okay. So how do, the, how do these repeats silence the gene? There are two major theories. The earliest theory was that those repeats form an unusual DNA structure that blocks the enzyme that copies DNA into RNA. That may well be true, that this sequence forms an unusual structure. But work from Richard Festenstein's laboratory, who's sitting in the front seat, indicated that more likely those GAA repeats, which resemble regions of, of the genome that are never <coughs> active, inactive DNA are inactive because of the way those sequences are packaged in the chromosome, called chromosome. So what I need to talk about now is how DNA is actually packaged in the cell nucleus. So you're all familiar, I'm sure, with pictures of mitotic chromosomes. So these are, the chromos these are human chromosomes seen in a cell just before it's going to divide. So this is the, the highest level of packaging of the, of the DNA in the cell. But this, is only, this only occurs before a cell is going to divide. Most of the time, the cell is in what is known as interphase, and the DNA is less compact. So here's a higher resolution picture taken with an electron microscope of an individual chromosome. So that's the highest level of compaction. Now, if we look at DNA as it exists in cells that are just happily ticking along, not dividing, the DNA is much more spread out. And in fact, we can, <coughs> under certain conditions, we can see that there appears to be a beads on a string pattern. Okay, so here's higher magnification. So this is probably what active genes look like, genes that can be copied into messenger RNA encoding protein. So the active protaxin gene might look like this, if we could actually identify the protaxin gene. These little balls here are called nucleosomes. It's the fundamental packaging unit of DNA in the cell. Two scientists, Carolyn Luger and Tim Richmond, working at the ETH in Zurich, used a technique called X-ray crystallography, and they solved the structure of this particular particle. So the white is DNA wrapped around a core of very basic proteins called histones. So what's the nucleosome? So the nucleosome is this fundamental subunit of chromosome. It has DNA packaged around a core of proteins. But nucleosomes fold up into what we call higher order structures. And these higher order structures are more condensed, and they represent inactive genes. So we believe that the transition from an active sort of beads on a string con configuration to this more condensed form might be involved in Friedrichs. 